In 2015, I watched a TED Talk by a long now board member, David Eagleman. Uh, it was about how to create new senses for humans. Uh, turns out we can only see a tiny little slice of the whole electromagnetic spectrum. The, whole, the rainbow that we can see is, is that little bit, bit right there. I'm going to take you into the ultraviolet today. All right, fluorescence. That's when you shine a, a flashlight of one color on an object, and it, and it glows a different color. Think of like a, you know, shining something on a $20 bill or like a psychedelic poster. OK, in 1962, uh, natural fluor fluorescence was found in a glowing jellyfish. In the, in the 90s, we sequenced it. We put it in another animal. And the people who did that got the Nobel Prize for it. This is my childhood best friend, Sam. Uh, he got his PhD in fluorescence. And one day, he told me that he thought there was like, a lot of other stuff out there in the ocean. But we kind of brought the jellyfish into the lab and forgot to go back outside and keep looking. So I started thinking. So inspired by David Eagleman and Sam, I got scuba certified, and I bought a black light. It sat in a drawer for like six months, waiting for my next dive, but then I was like, I wonder if things on land glow. So I started exploring. I took my first night hike. Within 15 minutes or so, I saw this glowing moth, and I was hooked. Since then, I've been like, spent many moons out there in the dark, exploring the world in ultraviolet light. And I'm finding all these crazy things that glow. So, problem is my photos were really blurry back then. Enter my friend Henry. He's an amazing photographer, travel blogger. Uh, he, he encouraged me to get better, to get a better camera, get better lighting, and taught me how to use it. So, the, the, the photos started getting a little better around now. Uh, the pandemic hit in 2020. I couldn't go scuba diving, but I realized, oh, I could find some ocean creatures in tide pools. So I started exploring the California tide pools. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite discoveries. So these are Pacific mole crabs. This is right down the street from the Long Now offices. Um, basically, like when the, when the water comes in, they stick up these like, feathery antenna, they grab food, and then the water retreats, and they, they pull them back in again. It's really beautiful. All right, I wanted to explore another biome. My friend Tamsin, who's a biomimicry expert, she opened the Brago Institute for Living Design in the California desert. So I did a creative residency down there, and I found this. All right, remember Sam? Well, we're back in Maine for the holidays. He had heard about this otter living at this pond in a cemetery, so we went and go to go see it with his family. I still don't know if otters glow, but I got an idea while I was out there. Graveyard? More like raveyard. Lichen glow like crazy, like crazy. Everyone gets like a unique portrait of, you know, painted by nature after they die. And it's painted over millions, or not millions, but hundreds of years. It's a girl with a snail earring. She was like 10 feet high. It was hard to, hard to capture. There's like sprinklers hitting me every 30 seconds. The snails are moving really fast. <laughs> All right, so what is lichen? Lichen is actually a partnership between algae and a fungus. So it's not a single organism, it's, it's a partnership. So here the red is the algae, and the yellow is the lichen starting to, starting to lichenize it, basically. The algae makes, makes uh, food from sunlight, and the lichen basically creates a greenhouse for it. Turns out this combination is what has created soil. They're, the lichen are the pioneers, basically. They come, they come to like harsh landscapes, they break down the soil, and they can even survive in space. All right, back down to Earth, here's, uh, here's some backstage. <laughs> so I, w I was in the cemetery. I called up Henry for advice. He's on a beach in Thailand with models. <laughs> you can see me like really regretting my life decisions here. So next stop, Thailand. <laughs> Just kidding. I went to the UK to find some more graveyards. <laughs> I wanted to find some older stuff because lichen grows very, very slowly, as I told you. <sighs> All right. I bet now you're wondering, like, you're starting to get curious. I hope you're maybe starting to let go of some certainty, starting to invite in some curiosity. Maybe you're wondering what around you glows, why things glow, how they glow, or maybe you're imagining your own tombstone. David Eagleman thinks that there's, like, a bunch of Nobel Prizes hidden out there. I agree. I think there's a whole new branch of science. I think there's a whole new genre of photography. And I think we have to find it. I think we have to find it collectively, because it's, like, too much for me. So I think we should start a citizen science project to go explore the outdoors at night. So come join us at glowhunt.org. Thanks very much. Thanks.